Welcome to this episode of the Sports Detective Podcast Show. My name is James Williams, and today we discuss the Iowa Hawkeyes have hired a new offensive coordinator. And we are talking about this today because on Tuesday, the Hawkeyes had an introductory press conference for the new offensive coordinator, Tim Lester. Um, just a little bit of background on him. He was a, a OC, I believe, at Syracuse, and then he became a quarterback's coach at Purdue, and then he became a head coach at Western Michigan for, I think, like five or six years, and then he got fired at Western Michigan. And then last year, um, in 2023, he spent the whole year as an offensive analyst for the Green Bay Packers. So that's just a little bit of background of him. And Kirk Ferentz has selected him to be the next offensive coordinator of the Iowa Hawkeyes. And he's planning to run it a little bit differently than Iowa has in the past, saying that he wants to run a aggressive and disciplined offense. If there's one thing you would say about Iowa's offense, um, now there's a lot of things you could say, over the last few years, you would not call it aggressive. I'll go ahead and show you guys this article here. Um, Tim Lester plans to build aggressive, disciplined Iowa offense. Uh, I am going to kind of skip around this like we do sometimes just because there's a lot of fluff on this that we don't necessarily need to talk about. Lester's task is to remodel one of the worst offenses in the country. This is Kirk Ferentz's quoting here. In my mind, he's a good fit for us, Ferentz said at a news conference. Uh, to introduce Lester, who was hired last week. Similar in a lot of ways to the way we've operated, yet a lot of different perspectives and new perspectives. That's part of moving forward, is getting different ideas, different views, and try to implement in a way we all believe will work for us. We'll get to some of these stats here of specific Tim Lester offenses here in a minute, guys. But just right off the bat here, um, similar in a lot of ways, so Kirk Ferentz is like, hey, we've had one of the worst offenses in the country. We've been literally the laughing stock of college football the last few years. Let's hire someone that has a lot of like operates his offense in a lot of similar ways to us. That's his logic here. A lot of different perspectives, new perspectives. What what kind of new perspectives can he offer? Is he offer like like at least say something like new formations. We're gonna you're gonna see something different in the Iowa offense this year. That at least a way to save face a little bit. But maybe the reason they're not saying that stuff is because they're not gonna implement anything new. They're not gonna do anything new. We're not gonna see any many, let's say, new wrinkles to the Iowa offense. It might be kind of the same old offense that we've been seeing the last few years. So that that quote there kind of takes me aback a little bit. Um, Lester replaces Brian Ferentz, Kirk's son, who was informed during the Hawkeyes off week last October that he would be out of a job at the end of the season. Okay, we all know that story. That's a fun story. Iowa went 10-4 and four and won the Big Ten West, but ranked last out of the 133 football bowl subdivision teams in total offense in 132nd in scoring. That is just god-awful. The Hawkeyes, who have averaged 15.4 uh, points per game, were shut out three times, including the Big Ten Championship game against Michigan and the Citrus Bowl against Tennessee. That's the last eight quarters of the year. Now, the Tennessee one's a little bit different because they got kind of destroyed by the transfer portal a little bit there. Um, they also were really beat up towards the end of the year, too. They are beat up kind of a lot of the year, too, because they lost their quarterback early. But still, that's still very, very bad. Um, in 2022, the Hawkeyes were 130th in total offense and averaged just 17.7 points per game. I can't believe that just two points a year's difference only moves them up two spots in total offense. That That, that is pretty startling. That is pretty startling with how, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how actually bad this offense has been. The one thing I know everybody wants to know is what we're going to be about, Lester said. We're going to be disciplined and we're going to be aggressive. Okay. <laughs> I think everyone wants their offenses to be disciplined. Aggressive's a little bit differently. So that what what does that mean? It means kind of like taking chances. It means taking chances, taking more deep field shots. Um, you know, maybe having, you know, more kind of reverses, trickeries, more guys in motion. Um, you know, just being willing to, you know, you know, put your you know, I, I again I don't know what that necessarily means. Does that mean like maybe going for it on fourth down a little bit more than usual? Maybe it's something like that, but interesting quote right there. Because again, one thing you wouldn't consider Iowa's offense to be over the last few years was aggressive. So let's go ahead and read that. This is where we get into the background of Lester right here. 
Um, Lester spent last season as a defensive analyst for the Green. Oh, I, my bad. I said offensive analyst earlier. I didn't realize it was a defensive analyst um, for the Green Bay Packers. After serving six seasons as the head coach at Western Michigan, he won 37 games at Western Michigan, and his offense ranked in the top 35 nationally in total offense for four consecutive seasons. You read that, it sounds pretty good, but but dropped to 125th in 2022. That is quite a drop. That's 95, or excuse me, not 95. That is 90 spots. That is 90 spots. Now, I don't know individually what each one of those four consecutive seasons was, but you're talking about 100 spots of like of where you lose. Now, again, I'd have to talk to someone from Western Michigan because I'm not necessarily a Western Michigan expert. Was this something where, you know, this happens every once in a while where sometimes a guy will take over a job and then we'll have a lot of success early, and then he starts to fall off a little bit later, and it's like maybe he doesn't know how to build a roster or something like that. Um, could it be something, too, with Western Michigan where, look at that year, 2022, maybe COVID kind of hurt the team, maybe NIL and the transfer portal hurt this team, and maybe that's part of the reason that they they fell off that bad. Um, so that's just a few examples. Of I don't know exactly. Um, a Western Michigan person would probably have to tell me on that one. Um, Lester was the quarterback's coach at Purdue in 2016 when quarterback David Blau threw for 3,352 yards. Lester was Syracuse's quarterback coach from 13 to 14, along with being offensive coordinator in 14-15. Syracuse's offense ranked 13th and 14th. Um, oh, wait, ranked 13th. Sorry, I read that wrong. Syracuse's offense ranked 13th in the 14-team ACC those two years. Oh, God, to be one of the worst in the ACC. Ugh, yikes. Kirk Ferentz said he chose Lester from a list of a final list of four candidates. I'm sure the other three were guys that were just like, you know, just either said no or are even farther from being employed than Lester was. When you look at Tim and what I've discovered is he's had a wide range of experiences, he said. I certainly knew of Tim and was aware of his background, especially at Western Michigan. His story, I felt good about it. And I was very, very impressed. He was like, oh, I love that 13th in the conference offense. Oh, you guys, we can move up five spots in our total offense. If we could be one of the bottom eight instead of one of the bottom three. Oh, we love that improvement. We love it. Lester will install his offense this spring without quarterback Cade McNamara, who suffered a season-ending knee injury. Early last season, isn't expected to be back on the field until um, either late in spring workouts or in the summer. Now, this is basically a quote of saying how he likes uh, Cade McNamara's experience and he's ready to have him come in when he's healthy and take up the offense. And I'll read this last little bit here and then we'll kind of give you my overarching take at the end. The Hawkeyes bring back their top three running backs, LaShawn Williams, Caleb Johnson, and Jazoon Patterson. Sorry if I said that name wrong. Tight end Luke Lockley, who missed most of last season with a leg injury, elected to return to Iowa instead of entering the NFL draft. Tight end Addison Ostrenga and wide receiver Caleb Brown, two of the team's top three receivers from last season, also returned. Yeah, you know, because you really, your receivers are so good last year, you're just happy they're back. It's a process, and it started a couple of days ago. Lester said, I've coached long enough, and I... Uh, long enough that I've run a lot of systems. There's a lot to choose from. I can't wait to see what we have. Boy, oh boy there, guys. If you couldn't tell. Now, now I'm not necessarily knocking the hire. Because, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what this Iowa offense is going to be. But there's two kind of working theories that I have here um, for why this Iowa offense has been so terrible over the last few years. Now there's, there's one of two things. Cause you could say, well, and, and this is kind of like what the Iowa people would say um, from what I've heard. Sorry if there's Iowa fans in the comments that are going to be mad at me. I mean, you're going to be mad at me anyway. This isn't in a positive cheery Iowa video. Um, sorry. I probably won't make a lot of those. Um, but there's kind of like the thing where it's like Brian Ferentz is a buffoon. He, he has this terrible offensive system and he doesn't know what he's doing. He only got hired because of nepotism. Now, I disagree with that for a little bit. I think he kept this job because of nepotism. But if you actually look at his like resume before that, he was like considered to be one of the better like offensive line coaches like in the country. And like, you know, someone like I heard um, somebody say that Rob Gronkowski, like, you know, credits Brian Ferentz with teaching him how to block and be a better blocker because he you know, uh, the Ferences and the Belichicks do have a certain relationship. So Ferentz spent a little bit of time in New England being a, um offensive, you know, uh, assistant in New England for a few years. Um, so I didn't necessarily think he was a dummy. 
But was he probably kept his job a few years that he should have because of nepotism? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This offense was an absolute laughing stock for the last three years. And they kept Brian Ferentz because he was the coach's, you know, he was the coach's son. Um, and his dad didn't want to fire his son, which is why the athletic director this year intervened and said, nope, we're getting rid of him. Interim athletic director, by the way. Um, so that's one working theory that like the, the scheme is terrible and like, you know, Brian Ferentz is an idiot. And if you just get like, you know, a grown up, for lack of a better word, to come in and run the system, everything will be OK. But I think this is now now to a degree, I, I think there's a way that I agree with that. And because you could say, well, if you look at Michigan, Michigan had a very conservative um, run first kind of like, you know, we're, we're going to beat you in the trenches kind of an offense, which is kind of how Iowa has tried to w- run their offense. You know, a lot of under center stuff, a lot of like giving you the running back, using the tight ends, um, kind of that stuff. Now, Michigan, I do think to their credit, is more willing to pass the ball and is more dynamic passing the ball than Iowa was. I don't think that's obvious to say, but I think the main key difference between Iowa's offense and Michigan's offense is Michigan. Obviously, you could say the coaching's better. I don't think that's an argument. But also, too, Michigan has several, several, like you could say that, like, I would say if I'm being, you know, on the low end, maybe seven players on that offense this year that are going to be NFL players. There might be more. They have got multiple NFL players and they got, you know, a five star quarterback. Both the running backs are going to go to the NFL. Most of their offensive line is going to go to the NFL. And I think even a receiver or two of them I saw maybe being projected in the NFL too. Um, like they're just very, very talented. Now they're, are they like Ohio state talented, you know, maybe like those Alabama Mac Jones, uh, Bryce Young, um, two of teams talented offensively. No, but they definitely were just a very, very talented offense. And if you look at Iowa's, this is something that people don't want to talk about because we point out the Iowa offensive linemen that we see in the NFL that are very good. We point out the George Kittles, the Sam Laportas that are very good in the NFL. This Iowa offense, that just the talent of it has really fallen off the last few years. Their offensive line wasn't as good as it was the last few years. I don't think some of their running backs are that bad, but they're definitely not like, you know, that elite, I would say. And they probably weren't able to showcase their abilities because teams kind of understood how to defend Iowa very well. Their quarterbacks the last few years have just been an absolute train wreck and a mess. Um, I think they've had some, obviously they had Sam Laporta, who was like one of the best tight ends in the NFL. I watched Iowa a lot. Couldn't forgot he was on the team. <laughs> when he was when he was on the Hawkeyes last year he just like wasn't utilized that much or that well and you know they even have other guys like Charlie Jones who went to uh was an Iowa player for a while didn't necessarily seem to be a good fit goes to Purdue he's one of the best most productive players in the country and just since that the last few years guys they just don't have talent on this offense that it's not that very talented and you're telling me next year they're going to be relying on a quarterback coming off of an ACL who I think like the optimistic view of Iowa fans for him was like he's a game manager and it's like all right one thing in the NFL to have a game manager okay maybe that's like a middle of the road quarterback but like isn't that the opposite of what you want in college Who, who's ever won and I could say people kind of make fun of JJ McCarthy doing that being a game manager a little bit but like i also think jj mccarthy is very talented and if fishing got into a shootout he could be you know very uh talented at that and i think he i actually think he's going to be a decent nfl player um because i i don't think they really you know unraveled like, like if you listen to michigan people talk about jj mccarthy they talk about him very very glowingly even before this this uh national championship this year trust me um but those are kind of like the two working theories and my kind of worry here is too, is like if I was going to still have the same talent and they're just going to have basically someone else run the offense differently. And if they're not going to like have it, does, I don't know if it has to be like a radical change, but you, you have to kind of jump into the 21st century with your offense a little bit here. And they just haven't, they've been super, super reluctant to do it. Every other team has been incorporating 21st century style things into their offense. A lot more RPOs, even Michigan, like, you know, they would throw it outside the numbers to J.J. McCarthy. They would take risks downfield. And, you know, they, they would have a dynamic – he was a dynamic quarterback that could move, make plays on his feet. And Iowa doesn't have that stuff on their team right now, and I don't know if they will. So maybe four years down the road, 
maybe this thing gets better. But here, here's the thing too, guys, how patient is Ferentz going to be? Like, like um, Lester had that last quote there where he said, Hey, I've run a lot of different systems. I kind of know what I'm doing. Well, what happens if early this year, Lester's running the Tim Lester offense and it's not working because of, you know, maybe factors that are out of his control. And, and Kirk Ferentz comes over and he's like, Hey dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? This, this, this is an Iowa offense. You're it's, it's kind of like how much is Tim, how much is Kirk Ferentz going to let Tim Lester be an offensive coordinator? Is he going to be hands off and be like, Hey man, I'll let you take the reins. You know, you've, you've run talented offenses in college football before. I want you to run one of those here. I'll give you a, a long leash and we'll, we'll go from there. Or is he going to be more hands on? And cause that's, that was kind of a working theory that was going wrong. Uh, around along with Iowa was that like a lot of people, and that's part of the reason a lot of people think that this search took so long is that just a lot of people didn't want to work under Kirk Ferentz because he's going to be a little bit of a maniacal tr- control three freak. And then it's like he was going to control the offense. And then if the offense ends up not working, the person that he's controlling ends up getting blamed instead of him. That's kind of the thing with Iowa. The fish rots from the head down. Now, not to say that Kirk Ferentz is a bad coach. He's obviously a great coach. He's um, probably the greatest coach in Iowa football history. And I don't know if, you know, I, I don't know what the bar is for like a Hall of Famer. He's like the longest tenured coach in college football right now. But it, I, I think he needs to kind of, if he wants this, because right now, here's the thing, guys, they're not getting talent. They don't have much talent. And right now, over the last few years, Iowa has become the laughingstock offense in college football. And I don't think people are going to be lining up to, you know, be in the transfer portal to come to Iowa. I know the thing with Caden Proctor recently. Caden Proctor was an Iowa kid. Nick Saban leaves. He goes to his second choice originally, which was Iowa. So so don't give me that in the comments. He's an Iowa kid. Um, but... I, I think he needs to kind of loosen up the grip a little bit and just have somebody, ha, just have somebody, you know, for a few years, just run the offense. Maybe have a little bit of influence with it, but you know, have somebody else run it, have somebody else's other, because that that's what the fans really want. They they want somebody that can like run a more dynamic, interesting offense rather than this kind of like you know baloney Iowa conservative check down offense that doesn't even work. It's one thing if you run that and it works, but it doesn't even work. So you're running this boring offense that doesn't work. You know, change it up, man. So there you have it. This went a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. So um, if you like this video, this is going to do it for the video, by the way. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Really helps us in the algorithm. Um, I talk a lot of college football. I've done over 50 plus interviews with people talking college football. Um, not a lot of them are on my YouTube channel because we've just started posting stuff on YouTube like the last like two months or so. Before that, the previous three years we were doing this show was all audio. So if you hit subscribe, you hit like that shows a lot of interest in topics like this. So we'll start to post a lot more topics like this. Feel free to go ahead and uh, explore the Sports Detective podcast page on YouTube. Um, we talk college football, NFL. NBA, college basketball, all that stuff. So thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.